Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Merry Christmas to you. Amen. And we thank God for allowing us to come together on this beautiful Christmas morning to praise our Savior. Just like we celebrate our birthday on the day that we were born, we are celebrating Jesus this morning on the day that has been set aside to commemorate his birth. And we thank God he was born to die. Amen. But he didn't stay in the grave. He got up on that third day with all power in his hand. This service is emanating from the sanctuary of the Fellow Baptist Church located at 4717 Augusta Road here in Garden City, Georgia. And we thank God for our pastor, Pastor Harold Edwards, the ministerial staff, Minister Victor Logan, Minister Emmanuel Gray, and Minister Arnold Matthews. Thank God for our deacons ministry, our deaconesses ministry, and the Fellow Nation at large. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. As our men's choir take a further in this the Lord's service in Jesus' name. Oh, 
is the price of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, He changed, He changed, you know He changed. Oh, yeah. 
I want it with the best of children. I want it with the best of children. Best of children. Best of children. Come on, dear. Come on, dear. I need you. I need you. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Bless the home. Bless the church. Bless the children. Bless the father. I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you. Ah! Go. I'm gonna let you go. Well, I know blessed Lord, I can't make it at all.
Celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are those that don't believe. But for all those that do, this is the day that has been satisfied to celebrate his birth. Celebrate the sacrifice of one father and one son. So that we all may have life everlasting. And I don't know about you. But it may took me about 40 years before I acknowledged come on now. Come on, come on. that him as my Lord and Savior. But without a doubt, ever since then, I'm telling you, <laughs> I believe. Without a doubt, without reservations, without any whiff of waffling or whatever, I'm just here to tell you straight, there is a God. He had a son that he sacrificed for you and me. And his name is Jesus Christ. As we'll have our prayer by Minister Gray, and I will come back with our scripture for today. Amen. Merry Christmas. Would you bow your heads? Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to the throne of grace mm -hmm. just as we are. Yes. Just to say thank you. Thank you. For another day. 
Lord, we realize that your grace is sufficient uh -huh. for this life that you have given us to live day by day. Lord, that's why we can say thank you for everything that you are doing for us in our life. Lord, I'm going to ask you this morning, Lord, would you bless the servant this morning? Please, Lord, right now. Lord, be with the sick and the shed in, those behind prison bar, Lord, touch them. Touch them, Lord, let them realize there is another way. And you are the way, the only way that they may be saved. By calling the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. For the blood that you shed at Calvary for our sins. Lord, I'll give you the praise. I'll give you the honor for being so great and so merciful. Lord God, this is your humble service. Standing before you right now, Lord, I'm going to ask you, Lord, uh, to search my heart, to search you, my mind. Lord, if you find anything you're not pleased with, Lord, I'm going to ask you, Lord, to move it. Have your way. Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, touch the preacher man this morning. When he come, Lord, Know him to speak like he never spoke before. Use those lips of clay. Use them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Our scripture today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <coughs> and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill, peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And they all, and all that they heard it, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before 
he was conceived in the womb. Amen. <coughs> Next words you will hear will be our pastor, Harold Edwards Sr. We thank God on this morning, as always, for his grace that is with us as we go forth on this day to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who made all of this possible, the one who gave of himself, the one who has left us an example of how we are to live our lives for the glory of God. We acknowledge him today. He's Jesus Christ, the Lord. We give honor to God this morning, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the power of his Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, as we gather here on this Christmas morning to go forth, not only in a celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior. But we go forth this morning being encouraged to tell somebody that he is Lord. That he died for the sin of the world and that if they would put their faith and trust in him, he'll make everything all right. So let us be encouraged as we glorify him today. We forget about ourselves, but we take this day, glory to God, to honor our blessed Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you once again that it is well with us. We thank you, Lord, that we're here this morning by your grace, clothed in our right minds, able to use our limb, able to lift up holy hands this morning. Able to sing Zion songs. Able to pray glory to God. Without ceasing. We, we thank you Father this morning. Knowing that it's all because of your grace. Oh Lord we gather here. On this Christmas morning. To worship. Our Lord and Savior. But Lord we can't do it without your grace. We need you. Without your grace. Without the presence of your Holy Spirit, this would just be another gathering. But Lord, we want to make it a spiritual experience whereby the power of God will come down and touch somebody this morning in Jesus' name to encourage their heart and to reinforce in their every being that the one that we're celebrating his birth today is the one, hallelujah, who's King of kings and Lord of lords. So, Lord, we ask that you would encourage us this morning as we encourage one another in the Lord. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. Give us power that we might do your will. And Lord, as we move just a little further in this worship hour, we ask, oh Lord, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you move upon the hearts of these, your people. Prepare them, O oh Lord, to receive what thus says the Lord. Move any distractions that would infringe upon their desire to hear from you this morning. And Lord, don't forget about me. I need you. Let your power come upon me. Anoint me, O oh Lord. Give me favor that I might be a blessing to these, your people. Lord, I'll give you all the praise, yeah. all the honor, yes, Lord. and all the glory because I realize that I'm all, I am only what I am by your grace. Yes. That I could not do anything without your blessing. So bless me, Lord, that I might be a blessing. I give it all to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's children say amen. amen. 
Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. So glad to be here again, like I said, on this uh, Christmas morning to celebrate and to acknowledge the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one that has made it possible for us to be able to celebrate. Without him, nothing would be possible. So we give all honor and glory to him this morning. Our scripture text will be coming from the Gospel of Luke again. The second chapter, but we're going to begin reading this time at the fourth verse. Luke 2, 4. And you look for your scripture. Christmas don't mean what it used to mean to me no more. Uh-huh. By that I mean I, I had the wrong motive and the wrong understanding, Brother Duncan, about what Christmas was about. I thank God that 28 years ago I came into the reality and the knowledge of what Christmas is all about. And Christmas is about Christ. And without him there is no Christmas. For anyone. Luke 2, 4. You got it? And the word of God reads, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. The message heard around the world, the greatest message that has ever been delivered on this side of glory. The message that brings to our awareness this day that there is none like him and that God sent him to be a blessing for you and I. This morning we go forth in celebration of the greatest blessing that has ever been bestowed upon the world. The blessing of the gift of God's dear son. Who came into this world over 2,000 years ago. Through a virgin birth. Born in a manger. To save the world from the sin it inflicted upon itself. Our celebration today acknowledging that Jesus the Christ has come in the flesh and understanding that without his coming there could be no celebration of this day that we call Christmas many in the world this morning will go forward in celebration sadly with the focus their focus for celebrating in the wrong place that is many will only focus on what the day will present to them and how the world celebrates the birth of Christ. Instead of focusing on the one, glory to God, who has made our celebrating possible. And that person is none other than Jesus Christ himself. The one who has given the world the hope of deliverance, church, from its sin. In other words, our focus this morning in celebrating the birth of Christ should never be about the day. And most people make it about the day, but it should always, hallelujah, be about Jesus. 
should be about the man who is the reason of why we celebrate this day. Never about the presence, but always about the gift of God. Never about the lights, glory to God, but about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Never about a tree, glory to God, but it should always be about God's eternal divine truth. Never about the materiality, but always about the grace of God and fulfilling his promised mandate. That he would send his son, his only begotten son, into the world to save sinners like you and me. God's mandate that required that the sinless Son of God would have to be born into the world that he created as one of us. Humility, being born, being wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, the glorious King of Kings and Lord of Lords who had to Come in the form of a servant and be found in fashion, the Bible says, as a man. The Bible says, and he humbled himself and learned obedience, glory to God. Even the obedience unto death. In other words, God himself, glory to God, who came and humbled himself so that you and I, hallelujah, might have a right or a chance of the hope of our salvation that we would not have to face the wrath of Almighty God. Right. That is God's eternal Son would have to incarnate in human flesh for the purpose of giving His life, hallelujah, so that all who have sinned and come short of the glory of God could have their sins washed in His precious blood. Wash the Bible says so that the stain of sin that brings death might be removed. You see the Bible said that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the reality is that when he came, he came for us all. The reality is that when he shed his blood, he shed his blood for all of us. Hallelujah. And until we come to that realization and that acceptance of who he is and what he's done for us, there ain't no Christmas. <laughs> I don't care about how many cars you buy or how many things you give out. There is no Christmas without, without coming to Christ. Hallelujah. I say all the time, when you take Christ out of Christmas, you have nothing. The message of Christmas this morning that came by the mouth of God's holy angel. The message that was not about focusing on a day. But all about focusing on the birth of the Savior himself. Yeah. Not about whether Jesus was born on December the 25th, as some want to argue. Whether he was born on June the 1st. Or whether he was born on any other date that was posted by man. That is not the issue. That was not the substance of the message. The thing that's most important, Sister Logan, is the fact that he was born. Hallelujah. Come on. Right. Had some folk come to my door one day on a Sunday who don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I said, glory to God, you're out celebrating uh -huh. Christmas with us being facetious, glory to God. And they told me that Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. So I asked them, does that bother you? And they said, yes. I said, well, what day do you want Jesus to be born on? Whatever day that you say, we'll that celebrate day. that day. They looked at me as if there was something wrong. And by the grace of God, that I was, willing to, was able to tell them, you see, it ain't about the day. Right. It's about the man. Right. Until you humble yourself to accept who he is, it doesn't matter what day we say, you're going to be in opposition. No, God didn't send the angel with the focus of arguing a day, Robert King, about when Jesus was born. The message is the fact that he was born. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting. In other words, God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but the Bible says that he sent his son into the world to save the world. There are some who are going to be eternally lost because they refuse to come to the light. The Bible said they don't like the light because the light has the power to reprove their ungodly deeds. We all were victims of that at one point in our lives. Every time the light would approach, we would want to run. But I thank God this morning. 
and everyone sitting under the sound of my voice yes. has made the decision to make Jesus Christ mm -hmm. their Lord. Yes. This is the focus of the message that God sent to the world by the mouth of his holy angel. Yes, the message that was not about focusing on a day, but about focusing on the birth of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Not again, as I said, about whether he was born on this day or that day. But the reality of him being born, the reality of his person coming to earth, the reality that it was required by the mandate of God that he had to be born in Bethlehem. Required that he had to grow up in Nazareth. And required, glory to God, the giving of his life on a hill called Calvary. You see, it does not matter what day we celebrate his birth does not matter, glory to God, if we don't agree on what day Christ was born. All that matters to the world is that on that blessed day, he was born. Amen. That it came a time that he would give his life a ransom for all. The message of the angel to those shepherds of good tidings and great joy that was to be to all people that on that day in the city of David, the Savior was born, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. God's message that is clear. And that is that Jesus is the Christ, mm -hmm. the Savior of the world, the one who sets the captives free, yeah. the one who is the perfect Lamb of God. The one who justifies the ungodly. The one who is the only means for a man to overcome this world. That is to be able to treasure the greatest commandment that God has given unto us. And that commandment is to lo love the Lord God with all our heart, yeah, yeah. soul, mind, and strength. You see, without glory to God, the grace of God in Jesus Christ, without being born again in him, none of this is possible. Yeah, yeah. You see, without Christ being born into the world, there could be no peace for the world. Yeah. I hear folks say all the time, glory to God, I'm going to make peace. We are going to make peace. <laughs> there is no peace without Jesus Christ. There are those that say, let's go and give last rites so we can make peace with God. The Bible says that he made peace for us by the blood of his cross. And if you don't go by way of the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't go at all. Without him coming into the world... There could be no peace because the Bible declares in Isaiah that he is the prince yes, come on. of peace yeah, come on, yeah. that was to come into the world. The promised son given whose name Isaiah said in Isaiah 9, 6, that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, yes, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of peace. People ask the question when is it going to get better? They ask the question all the time what are we going to do about the sin that we're facing? And I tell them there ain't going to be no peace. You can't legislate peace. You can't make laws that make no peace. I know what they say but it's only going to happen when Jesus comes back. Amen. When he breaks through. That's right. He'll bring peace. That's right. That will last. Forever. And without his birth. Right. There is no hope. Of salvation. Without his birth. There is no deliverance. From our sin. Somebody might say. Well he died on the cross for that. But he couldn't die on the cross. Duncan Johnson. Unless he was first born. Uh -uh. Right. To the world. Right. Without his birth. There is no victory. Over death. And the grave. Without his birth there is no joy. To the world. No peace. On earth. No goodwill Toward men. 
Because it all comes in the package and the life of Jesus the Christ. Because without his birth, there is no Christmas. No matter what, how we celebrate, if Jesus Christ is not the focus of today for you, there is no Christmas. If your life has not been subjected to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, there is no Christmas. If you have not come by way of the cross, there is no Christmas. If you don't cry out to God and say, Lord, I need your help, there is no Christmas. If you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, there is no Christmas. If you've not been born again, there is no Christmas for you. In other words, there would be no basis for our annual celebration if Jesus did not come into the world. There would be no lifting of our spirits and hope, glory to God, that the Bible says springs eternal. Eternal in that we will always have the assurance, church, of our eternal hope in Jesus Christ. That will never end in disappointment of God's wrath mm -hmm. on us. Today for us is our declaration of celebration that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Christ who has come into the world to save us from our sin. And for that we can shout Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. That we can have joy. For that we can have peace that surpasses all understanding. That no matter what it is that we're facing or what we have to go through, we know that it is well with us. That's why we can celebrate today. Glory to God. Whether we get anything that's carnal or temporal. Uh -huh. Because God has given us yes, his all. Yes, yes, Our day. As believers, as Christians, in celebration, that is not about the trinkets mm -hmm. that we may or may not receive. Yes, but all about the treasure, glory to God, of our salvation yes, that is eternally ours, received by the grace of God yes. through faith yes. in Jesus Christ. Yes, we will go forward and celebrate in today, but not like the world celebrates. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, we will go forth and praise the God, but not like the world is unable to do. But we are called to be witnesses for Christ. Yes, Lord. To let the world know that if you want joy, that is unspeakable joy. Yes. If you want peace, hallelujah, that the world didn't give to you. And that the world can't take away. You must be born again. Yeah. If you want to experience the joy of our celebration. And why it is yeah. that no matter what comes against us. Glory to God. We are able to keep pressing yeah. toward the mark. You have to be able to celebrate. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Christmas. Yes. Like we celebrate. Yeah. Christmas. Yes Christmas is indeed. All about the birth of Jesus Christ. Let not our hearts be troubled, the Bible says. Let us believe in God. Jesus said, always have faith in God. But it must start with making Jesus our Lord. We celebrate by giving praise to the one. Who has made it possible. We celebrate this morning. By giving honor. To whom. The honor is due. We celebrate this morning. To Jesus. And thanking him. For all that he's done. For us. Rejoice with us this morning. Celebrate Christmas with us this morning. 
By calling on the name of Jesus. By giving him your life. For there is none like him. The Bible declares that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall not be made ashamed. We thank God again for another Christmas celebration. But it is only truly a celebration when you've made Jesus Christ your Lord. Let us stand to our feet. There might be somebody today who's going to leave this assembly or somebody who's listening by way of Facebook who's saying, I'm celebrating Christmas today, but Jesus Christ is not their Lord. You may have a celebration, but it's not Christmas. For there is no celebration of Christmas without Christ. You under the sound of my voice and you need salvation today. On this blessed Christmas morning, you can have it. Receive the greatest gift that the world will ever be given. And that is the gift of God's dear son as your savior. For the Bible declares that if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. The Bible says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're here or today or if you're listening by way of Facebook and you need Jesus, cry out to him right now. Say, Lord, save me. And he will save you. He will save you. He said his mission was to come and to seek and to save that which is lost. Hallelujah. And he'll find you if you'll just cry out. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? one? The doors of this great church is open. There might be somebody who's listening by way of Facebook. Who would like to commit themselves, glory to God, and you can find your way to 4717 Augusta Road to fellowship with us. We open the doors of this church to you this morning, that you can come and join and fellowship with us on this Christmas morning. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? All is well. Remember, every day, every moment that God gives us is precious. To commit ourselves and our wills and our lives and everything that we do to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to take any moment for granted that there will be another moment granted unto you. But while it is today, glory to God, take advantage of this day, this blessed day. Hallelujah. The day, glory to God, that we celebrate that he came into the world to give life unto the world. A world that was dead. Make this your choice this day. In Jesus' name. And I say to all of you again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And we pray that as God leads us into the year 2023. That it will be a prosperous year for you. But it can only be prosperous when you lay down your life for the Lord. When you give him your very own. That's your will and your desire. Again, Merry Christmas to all the children of God. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. The mountain. Over the hills, everywhere, go tell him on the mountain, where Jesus Christ, oh, he ought to just go, tell him on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere, go tell him on the mountain, where Jesus Christ, we Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
brother to take us home, please, sir. Let us lift our hands now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, yes. the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest will abide henceforth now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord sing together. Amen. Amen.